In this video, we're going to be looking at the scroll enhancer element with the Optimize Press Plus Pack. Now I'm inside my page here. I'm going to use a page, a template they've already got built, just to show you how this works, and you can see as the um, as the page scrolls on down when we click the element. So if I just add the element here under this text, I've typed in scroll enhancer, and it brings up this here, scroll enhancer, and I'm going to choose this option. You can see we've got a few different designs here to pick from, different arrow shapes, different colors. I'm going to choose this one. And we then have the option to set a margin. This is the spacing at the top of the element itself. So if you want to create a little bit of spacing, you can enter a different amount of pixels in here. And then we have the element tag, which we're going to jump to, where it's going to scroll on down to. And this would generally be done using the name tag, which is a piece of HTML, or an element ID or a CSS selector. So I'll show you how we can, the easiest way you can do this, just by going into an element and adding in piece of CSS. So for now I'm going to just leave this blank because then we're going to pick our element and we're going to add in the element ID then we're going to come back here and enter in the ID that we create. We then have an option to display a description on the scroll enhancer so this is on the element when you hover over it. We also have the option to add some padding which is the offset again in pixels where the scroll enhancer is. You can have a speed um, this is the speed effect and then you also have a f the effect whether it's a scroll to or a jump to. You can see you can pick one there. I'll leave it scroll to just for now. We then also have the animated effect which actually happens to the little element once we apply it to the page. So you'll see that. I'll leave it at bounce. We have other ones there like fade in, fade out. I'm going to leave it set to bounce and I'll just click insert. And you can see it goes on the page here. Now this little icon will start bouncing when we look at it on the page in a moment. So what I'll do is I'll scroll down and choose a piece of text like this here. Now if I wanted my page to scroll to this area of the page, we can go into the text and add an element ID if one doesn't already exist. So you can see this one, for example, already has an element class in it. Now if it didn't have one, you could just type in here and you, your page could jump down to this. You can try taking out even one of these element classes and using it if you like, but to keep it simple, what we tend to do is create a new element class which is a name which is quite unique to the page itself. You might find that these element classes, um, for example Hero and Font Notto, are used in various other places all throughout this page and when the um, scroller starts to apply its scrolling effect it's going to scroll to the first element that it finds called Hero or Font Notto. So you can find it will cause problems by using the ones that we've already got entered here. So the best way to do this is actually enter in your own element class completely. Now, you can do this by um, obviously adding just a blank element in. You could look at another element here. This one's got some custom HTML in it, and it doesn't actually have an element class. So for this example, I could just put in David. Okay, that's just my name. You could use your brand name. You could use a page with a number after it. Anything here, not a space in it, nothing like that, just a simple one word, and it could be a number of characters, or it could be you know, something unique to your page that maybe you'd recognize. I'm going to copy that, I'm going to call mine David, I'm going to click Update. Now, what I've done is I've applied that effect to the custom HTML um, element, which is already on this page. So that's where I've applied it to. I'm going to go back up to my Scroll Enhancer here, click on the Edit, and then I'm going to enter in my element ID that I just created, which was David. Now, one thing we have to do is put the dot in front of it because it's an element class, it's a CSS class. So we put in there dot David. And then I'm going to scroll down and click Insert. Then I'm going to save and close this page. And what I'll do is I'll reload the page here. And you'll see there's our scroll enhancer on the page it's bouncing so if you imagine this page is up like that you're just seeing below or near the folded area of the page towards the bottom of the browser you've got the little bouncing effect applied and it's just drawing your attention down to this little little scroller there now if we click on it what happens is it's going to jump down to the area of the page where I applied the effect and you can see it's come down to the page and it's come to this section here this line which is where it's met the top of the browser and it's taken me down to the area of the page so that's pretty much how it works, and that's the easiest way to get it working, but you can use other different element class. So I'll show you just another one. If I go back in the live editor, and you'll notice on that effect what happened is it took the page all the way down 
to the top area of this class. So sometimes it's actually better to put it above where you want it to be, or you can play around with the different padding and things that you can apply to the scroll enhancer itself. So what I could do, I could take this out, my element class David, and what I could do is even add it to the row here. If I edit the row, oh, this row's already got a class in it, so I'm not gonna add it to that row. What I could do is add in another element above. I could just put in the custom HTML shortcode, obviously not applying any code to it, and then taking this one, dragging it above the headline here, and then click on the cogwheel and entering in my class, again, my element class called David. So that means when we use the scroll enhancer now, it's going to jump down to that section of the page, which is above the headline this time. And um, bearing in mind, this template also had a sticky nav at the top, so it wasn't the best example to show you, but it's got a sticky nav at the top, and it's also taken it to the top of the browser. So if I save and close now and then go back and reload the page, if we scroll on up, reload, and then we click on that, you can see it goes down, it's meeting the top of the page if the sticky nav was there, it's just sitting me at the top of that page where it's taken me to. So that's how it works just using the element class ID. Now there's another option you can do which is called the name tag. So you could find an area on your page where you want the text to jump to. So for example here, and what I could do is add in, let's just add in a piece of text. I'll just put jump here. And I'll insert that. So we can add in our name tag. And by doing this, we just put in a name. And again, I'll use I'll use David F for this one. Then we close it. Okay, so this is the name HTML tag. And then if I click update, go back up to my scroll enhancer, and I want to edit that name tag in here. So we've got David F. And then we're going to remove the dot this time because it's not a CSS or an element ID. So I'm removing the dot, and then I'll click insert, save and close reload the page and scroll down it's going to click on this and you can see it's taken me down to our error of the page which is the jump here text that we put so it's taken it always takes you to or the area we type in the element that that link it always takes that to the top of the browser okay so if you don't have a sticky nav like this in place then you wouldn't um, you'd see it takes takes the text right the way to the top of the browser and most cases people use these usually either leave a little gap above or they put it actually a bit higher than where they actually want the element to jump to just so it jumps and the text sort of comes into view where you can simply read everything below um, the area of the section that this page has jumped to. So that's the scroll enhancer. Have a play with it. You can use the different styles that we've got in there and the easiest way is obviously using the element class ID where you just simply go in, create your new class ID and create something very unique to your site. So make the element ID name unique and maybe unique to that page as well. But you could probably use your brand name and some numbers afterwards, that'd be perfect for that. It's just something different. And if you use the element ID, make sure you put the dot in front of the element ID, the CSS class, so it knows where it's jumping to. So that's part of CSS, it has the dot in there. But that is the scroll enhancer with the optimized press plus back.